Hi guys, it's me Blanche for Feast in the Middle East and I thought I'd take a little break from cooking to show you some of the lost footage of Spain. Now for those of you that have been watching my channel, you might have seen my multi-part series on the food and wine of Rioja. It's a gorgeous part of Spain that not too many outsiders know about and in this last of the four-part series, I'm going to focus on one of the most beautiful and romantic places I literally have ever seen and it's in the heart of Spanish wine country. And then we're gonna move on to the cosmopolitan city of Bilbao. First, we headed out to the Vivanco Museum of Wine Culture. Now, this is a must-see for anyone visiting Rioja. It's the top wine museum in the world, covering 8,000 years of winemaking history, exploring the relationship between wine and culture. Now, this museum is no joke. It literally covers 4,000 square meters of exhibition space. Now, when the Gonzales winemaking family started contemplating this project back in the 90s, people thought they were nuts. However, today, more than two decades later, this museum is respected as one of the great icons of wine culture in the world. Moral to the story, if you have a great idea that everyone thinks is crazy, do it anyway, you'll get the last laugh. Now, of course, after the tour of this massive museum, everyone was thirsty for wine. So we got to sample some lush Vivanco wines in a wine tasting and enjoy this breathtaking view. I really didn't want to leave and I thought the surroundings couldn't get any more beautiful until they did. Next, we headed over to Ontagnon Winery in the village of Kel, which was founded in the year 1200 by Arabs that came to this region. Now it's one of the many wine regions in Rioja with two varieties of grapes. One's called Tempranillo and the other is Garnacha. <laughs> We're getting a personal tour of the vineyard. Group photo in front of the sign. Group photo. The sweetest, most rich grapes. It's so tranquil out here. And it's been around for hundreds of years. It's a real treat to get this tour from a place that no tourists ever go to. Like we're one of the only tourists that ever visit this place. This reminds me of summers as a kid when we used to pick grape leaves. Look at these gorgeous grapes. So here's the deal, if you want to make huaracane or stuffed grape leaves, you must avoid these big, fat, furry leaves like this. These are called garnacha leaves here. You want smaller, softer leaves with no fur like these tempranillo leaves. I was so excited to meet one of the daughters of the family that runs the Ontanion winery. Her name is Raquel. Now, do you ever meet someone for the first time and they're so down to earth and sweet that you feel like you've known them for years? That's how I felt about Raquel. I think Th this is from your family, right? Yeah. How many generations? How many is it your great grandfather? Can yeah. you tell me the story about your family? Yeah. So uh, my family, the, the origin is for here for many generations, more yeah. than six generations right now. And um, so, so six yeah. generations. Six generations. If somebody wants to come, uh, or, or if somebody wants to buy your wine in the United States, yeah. what do they look for? Do they just look at they're, on, uh, on they're all called Ontañón. They are called Ontañón. Yes, and they sell it everywhere in the United States. Would you say I, I would so? say maybe in forty states. Forty states. You can buy Ontañón. So you don't have to come here to Rioja. You can have a taste of Rioja in the United States from many places. After the wine tasting, they treated us to a homemade Spanish feast in one of their cave-like wine cellars with rustic dishes like cassoulet with pork and beans, fresh tomato salad, serrano ham, and Spanish sausage. After lunch, we took a hike up to the most gorgeous spot in the winery. This is the exact place where bachelorette Rachel Lindsay fell in love with Brian Abbasolo in season 13 of the popular show. And unsurprisingly, they are scheduled to get married this year. I have to say that I've been overwhelmed by the beauty of this place. It's just there's a stillness, you know, you don't hear any cars. The sun is setting over the mountains there. And you just see these beautiful vineyards covered with lush, sweet grapes. And it's so hard to find. This is a really hard place to find. I know I'm probably never going to come here again. But just the fact that I was here at least once in my life makes me feel complete. Now that you know where to propose to someone, let's head off to where you can go on your honeymoon, to the Marques de Riscal Hotel. Here you're greeted by this artistic masterpiece by Canadian architect Frank Gehry. 
It's a luxurious chateau topped with titanium ribbons meant to capture the essence of wine as it flows in a glass. And on the grounds are the luxury hotel, a spa, several award-winning restaurants, and of course, the Marques de Discal Winery. Here, winemaking is an art as well, and the people of this region take pride in every aspect of manufacturing this liquid gold. To be honest, once I learned about what it takes to make a bottle of wine, I'm surprised that all wines don't cost over a hundred bucks a bottle. From harvesting, to extracting, to calibrating, and storing, and manufacturing, and shipping, and promoting, winemaking is super tedious and exhausting work that you can only do if you're seriously passionate about wine. Now, I don't want to give winemakers any ideas to raise prices, but I don't take for granted that after all this work, I can buy this high-end wine in the States for about 50 bucks. It really makes me think that the two buck chuck is nothing short of miraculous. For the final stop, we head out to the nearest metropolis, the 10th largest city in all of Spain called Bilbao. I highly recommend the Carlton Hotel. It has old world French architecture and a great central location. If you're one of those people that needs food first thing in the morning, book a hotel package that includes this lavish breakfast. Now Bilbao, which dates back to the 14th century, is an urban success story. It has easy to navigate transportation, green spaces, and sleek towers shooting up besides old ornate architecture. Plus, it has plans to renew old forgotten neighborhoods. Again, architect Frank Gehry makes his mark here for this fantastic chrome and metal creation, the Guggenheim Museum. Make a pit stop here for a massive collection of modern and contemporary art. But you can find art anywhere you look, as the buildings on the banks of the river here look like impressionist paintings. And the food markets here can be as thrilling as soccer matches. Pinchos, or tapas, are abundant here, and I don't really even see the reason for big meals when the small plates here are so interesting and stare at you with that come-hither look everywhere you go. Right now, this whole street is on fire with so many people, all ages, families, they're drinking, they're having a good time, look at that. And they all are eating pinchos and tapas, it's so family-oriented, and I just want to give you a flavor of what this street is like on a hopping Friday night. What I learned from the locals here is that no one really cooks at home because most of them live in super small apartments, so they really can't cook much. The gathering place for family and friends, even during the holidays, are at restaurants like this. That's why it's so lively here, no matter the time of day. This is the end of the Spanish food and wine series. Thanks for joining me and subscribe because I have more fun recipes and experiences to share with you in the videos to come.